CNN just can't get enough of the Nevada Convention chaos storyline. It's, it's today's missing airplane. They just can't cover it enough. And I want you to understand while we show you the clips that we're going to show you over the course of this video, that CNN is the media outlet we criticize on almost a daily basis for refusing to take a stance even when it's obvious what the facts are. Yeah. That they will pretend that everything is 50-50. They have no passion. They have no drive. They are dry and boring and that's what they are. And so contrast that criticism that's well established with what you're going to see in these clips. Because here you're going to see Brooke Baldwin who's going to have a Hillary Clinton and a Bernie Sanders supporter on and watch how she butts into the conversation, how she tries to shut him down, watch how she tries to shut him up because he's not saying what she wants to hear in this clip. Senator Sanders had a mega platform last night and, you know, understand the frustrations from him and folks in his campaign and supporters um, and, and their passion for Senator Sanders. But, you know, he never once sort of spoke to, to the supporters uh, and addressed what had happened in Nevada. Instead, the frustration over, listen, Democratic Party, you need to be fair, fair to us as well. Should he have said more, though? <laughs> in terms of the statement he made uh, earlier, I think he addressed it. And I think that if you also put this in context, if you look at the entire year that Bernie has ran, run in this campaign, tens of thousands of people. There's not been a single act of violence in any of those campaigns all throughout the country. And there was no violence at that convention. There was a lot of raucousness. There was yelling, you know, I've been in politics a long time and I've been at union meetings that were a lot more raucous when people were debating strike votes and lots of other things. People waved signs, when, they booed, when they chairs yelled. chairs being flipped, no, first of all, the show chair me, of the no, convention show me one, saying that show she's me, being threatened. Well, hold on, let, let, let's separate the two things. Sure. At the convention itself. Sure. Show me one video there where it showed chairs being thrown. Bernie and everybody else, show me where the chairs are actually being thrown. There was. I reviewed some of those videos. But let's be clear. Um, everybody has said that the threats against the chair of the party, the death threats, were totally unacceptable and out right. of bounds. It was raucous. It was unpleasant for some people. Sometimes that's the way political conventions Barbara go. Barbara Politi Boxer said she feared for her life. Shouting. It's not nothing. You can't Wait tell Barbara Boxer that she, when Barbara Boxer, it, who is a lioness in the Senate, uh, says she feels threatened, that's okay? So, no, but I happen to think Barbara, Bo I like Barbara Boxer, and I think she's been terrific as a progressive senator, but um, whoever was yelling at her, they have the right to do that. So there's a couple <laughs> things to break down there. Uh, I mean, first of all, she said he didn't address it at his victory speech uh, for Oregon, uh, perhaps because he had already addressed it. He had already put out a very clear uh, condemning statement at that point, which, of course, she doesn't even reference there. It doesn't exist. It never happened. Um, and then she talks about the, the chairs being thrown. I think at some point they go on to show a guy on video who lifts the chair and then puts the chair down. Wow, that looks dangerous. Exactly. I mean, we live in the age of the iPhone. There were 50 high-def cameras at any given second there. If there was footage of chairs being thrown, they would have already shown the footage of chairs being thrown. They haven't shown it because they don't got it because it didn't happen. Yes. And also, this Barbara Boxer is a lioness. Are you kidding me right now? Focus on Bar the lion part. Her, this whole narrative of Bernie Sanders being dangerous and angry... Mm -hmm didn't just start now. They have been building this narrative for months. So a uh, Huffington, Huffington Post article from February 4th of 2016. Uh, Barbara Boxer was being interviewed, uh, and here's what she had to say. Bernie's, Bernie evidences a tremendous amount of emotional anger, and that is a lot of the mood of a lot of people are kids who are saddled with debt. The senator added that while young voters may be attracted to the angry rhetoric, she feels Sanders uh, lacks Clinton's talent for bringing people together. So this notion that he's like this angry, like dangerous guy started a while ago. They've been yeah. building this narrative. But more importantly, the incredible thing here is Barbara Boxer has a political bias. She is supportive of Hillary Clinton, okay? Mm -hmm. So does it fit her uh, narrative and her best interest to say that she feared for her life? Of course it does. Yeah. And also, it's She's Barbara Boxer. She's a politician who has secret service, who has security with her constantly. She did not fear for her life, okay? She's pushing this ridiculous narrative, and unfortunately, the mainstream press is running with it. But Barbara Boxer was fearing for her life. Someone yeah. picked up a chair and then put it back down. If, if a Hillary Clinton supporter says that they feared for their lives, he should drop out of the race. Clearly, it's one plus one equals two. And you saw the footage, by the way. There was a ridiculous line of armed police officers between the crowd and the people on the stage. So because people 
past a line of police officers yelled at you, a person who's been in politics for years and years and years, really fears for her life, does that actually make sense? Or does it make a little bit more sense that she's sick and tired of Bernie Sanders sticking around in this race, and so she's willing to say, as a politician, whatever she has to say to get him out? Which makes more sense to you? And that should be clear at this point. And by the way, so she got yelled at, and they'll show the video of people booing her, which is clear violence if you get booed, I think. Um, but they don't show a little bit earlier in the video, they selectively edit it so that you don't see her antagonizing the crowd, telling them, yeah, come on, boo me. Boo me and you're, Bern you're uh, booing Bernie Sanders, you're booing America. She's yelling at them, antagonizing them, trolling them, but they don't show that video. Oh, that's Perhaps weird. Perhaps they didn't have access to it. It's just CNN. Maybe they didn't have it. All these things are just coincidences, Exactly. John. It's, yeah. Man, it just keeps lining up against Bernie. It's weird it's how that works super out. Super weird. So it's not just uh, Brooke Baldwin. Uh, let's go to Ashley Banfield and let's see again. This is CNN, known for being straight down the line, neutral, not being thrown by all these political passions. That's for the Bernie bros to get all fired up. So look at her face and her body language when she's interacting with a Bernie Sanders supporter in this clip. Uh, Sally, I'm going to begin you. with you because I know that you've been an, an avid Bernie Sanders supporter since the beginning. But we've now got a grandmother who is worried about her five-year-old grandchild. Uh, we've got a woman who says her marriage might be on the brink because of Bernie Sanders supporters. We have a U.S. senator who just said on live national television that she feared for her life at a Democratic convention. Where is this going, Sally? Well, okay, first, let me let me just say one thing I think it's important to say, which is I know we in the media often love sort of drama and false equivalencies, and in, in no way, shape, or form is this akin to what's happening in the Republican Party. There you have leading Answer figures. Answer the question. I don't want to talk about the okay, Republicans. No, I want to say, I want, I'm going to the Republicans in about 10 minutes. But right, I need 10 full I minutes to get down Democrats on this I, mess. It is ugly. It is foul. Okay, wait, wait, Someone who was I, fearing for her life. Yes. Where is this going? Wait, wait, I'm not defending any of this. Lewis, how far does the DNC go in demanding something more vocal, uh, more vociferous from Bernie Sanders' campaign and the candidate himself to decry the disgusting behavior that we just saw play out? And we are continuing to see it. I'm telling you right now, that woman in Nevada, every two seconds, says she's getting some kind of foul kind of text message or social message. Uh, and this, I mean, I don't think... I don't think you're biased to say that that's horrible. I get it. I've heard that over and over again as everybody from the DNC is asked about this disgusting melee. But what I want to know is, has the DNC put out overtures to contact Bernie Sanders? Because I think uh, Debbie Watson Michelle said she had not. I want to know what the DNC is doing to quell the fire and perhaps demand that Bernie Sanders really apologize for what's going on and order, demand those people not to do this kind of thing in his name. That's the language where I think everybody was hoping for, maybe at the top of the statement that was put out by Bernie Sanders yesterday. So they have the statement. She referenced the statement. When is he going to apologize? I'm not going to read this paper. This, this paper over here, I'm not going to read that. I don't, I don't like what might be included in that. I don't like the clear condemnation of any violence, whether physical, whether in the melee that she's talking about there. And I played Dungeons & Dragons. I know what a melee is. It's a physical brawl. There was not a physical brawl there, okay? or if there are any personal harassment of individuals. He was incredibly clear she doesn't care because she wants, she brought on those Hillary Clinton supporters to say the DNC should demand that he drops out. That is her only goal in doing this segment. You know, it's, it sucks, but in order to actually lead to a revolution in this country, you have to be somewhat Machiavellian. And Bernie Sanders is such an admirable, kind person and understand why I'm saying this there were so many different opportunities for Bernie Sanders to exploit some of the scandals that Hillary Clinton is involved in for his own political gain mm -hmm. he could have attacked her for the email scandal refused to touch it okay because he wanted to run a clean campaign she's being investigated by the FBI he will not exploit that for his political gain yeah. okay um, he has been so incredibly fair to her. He attacks her on the issues, which is what you're supposed to do when you're running against someone in the primaries or even in the general election, right? Um, 
unfortunately, you got to play the d dirty politics. You got to hit below the belt. You have to have this Machiavellian nature in order to do it. And even though I love this about Bernie Sanders, he's softer than George Zimmerman's body after he was detained for shooting Trayvon Martin, okay? Keeping it real, because he's a kind person, okay? Yeah. And for anyone to defame his character like this in the mainstream press disgusts me. Yeah. Yeah, and, and look, I mean, there you saw it. She's, she's just screaming at them. Say it was awful. Say it was horrid. Say it was impure. Say all these things. Do you think they had that passion I when people know. at yeah. Donald Trump rallies were literally beating the crap out of people? Not lifting a chair and then putting a chair down. Not leaving text messages, but literally bloodying people and sending them to the hospital. And then telling reporters at the scene, the people who were punching each other, saying, we'll kill him if, he, if we have to, if he comes back. Did they have that passion? I want to know. No, they let him call in for interviews the next morning. I want to know when Hillary Clinton's campaign is going to apologize for actor Wendell Pierce assaulting uh, an individual at an Atlanta hotel. Mm -hmm. I mean, he grabbed a woman, followed her to her hotel room, grabbed her, and allegedly assaulted her. Yeah. I mean, when is, the, when is the Clinton campaign going to apologize for that kind of yeah. violent rhetoric that has led to this action by this actor? Well, I am disgusted by this. And other disgusting rhetoric. I read this morning Ed Rendell, big supporter, politician, supporter of Hillary Clinton, said that Donald Trump insults ugly women. He likes beautiful women, he hates ugly women, and that's gonna really help us in the election because there's more ugly women than attractive women. When is, Hillary when is she going to denounce him? When are him? you going to apologize? Denounce Ed Rendell. Please do that right now. Sexism in the Hillary Clinton campaign, and she is silent as of right Hillary now. Hillary bros. Hillary bros. We've got a Hillary bro, Ed Rendell, Hillary bro, bro number one. But no, she's not going to say anything, and CNN is certainly not going to demand that she says anything because they want this thing to be over. And if you are a Hillary Clinton campaign, I'm going to remind you of one of the little benefits to you of this primary continuing. The second Bernie Sanders drops out, they're not going to give a fuck about this primary anymore. They're going to go back to covering Donald Trump 100% of the time. That means Hillary Clinton is going to be gone from the airwaves. They're not going to care about her. They're going to cover the bright, shiny Donald Trump. And for some reason, the Hillary Clinton supporters are just desperate to race into irrelevance there. So enjoy that once you finally get it.